It's the sheer number of attacks that shocked many people, 16 across the country. One of the worst was here in Alamein neighborhood Baghdad, where at least 10 people were killed and more than 25 injured. A car bomb exploded here, carried so many tons of explosives. Across Iraq, it was the same story. Shootings, car bombs, suicide attacks. Violence is now at its highest level since 2007 and shows no signs of stopping. The government blames a group called the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, ISIL, but others say the security situation is a result of the Prime Minister consolidating power and alienating the people who could help him battle the armed groups. If it is the same man getting the Prime Ministry, getting the Minister of Interior, getting the Minister of Defense, and you always have the same plan, the same failure, the same power, uh, uh, manpower, uh, this, that means there is a major failure in the major file, just like the security file. In Ambar province, Ramadi and Fallujah have been turned into ghost towns. The Iraqi army has laid siege since the beginning of the year to try and flush out ISL fighters, but sources tell us that large parts of Fallujah is at least still under the control of ISIL. Human rights groups have criticized the government's tactics in Ambar province, saying that they've shelled the local hospital at least 16 times. Now that's a charge the government denies, but it is trying to put pressure on ISIL fighters inside Ambar province to try and get rid of them from the area. But it seems the more pressure they put on them inside Ambar province, the more ISIL fighters mount attacks outside of Ambar province. And that's a pattern we've seen before. ISIL are using the same tactics as Al-Qaeda in Iraq used against American and coalition troops. With violence rising, many Iraqis are wondering if any lessons have been learned and whether security forces can do anything to stop the attacks. Imran Khan, Al Jazeera.